who is a Dr. Seuss character? <laughs> who is responsible for the data? You are. You, me, us, we the database folk. And since we are responsible for it, we must be control freaks. <laughs> yes, I'm trying to start a cult and you guys are not working it out here. You should be chanting with me. All right, so because we're control freaks, we've learned um, how views can help us a little bit control stuff, how users and user access can help us control stuff. We're also going to learn today how um, uh, indexes help us a little bit. Now, these indexes don't help us so much with security as it does with speed. And then we're also going to look at um, constraints. Okay, constraints. Okay. A uh, brief little reminder about users. Um, if I want to create a user, create user Beavis and uh, identified by identified by password. Now, also notice here, guys, this is important. This may be silly, but password in quotes there, that's not a MySQL keyword. That's his actual password, right? So that, that would be whatever their password would be, you know, my password, right? Okay. I'm just choosing password because that's what I've already created in the batch file that lets me log Beavis in automatically. But just know that that's not a, that's not a keyword there. Okay, so I create that. Now, um, somebody asked the question the other day, and I couldn't remember the answer, and I, I think... Uh, Dan, was it you asking about how to see the permissions? Somebody asked that question, and I couldn't remember the syntax. So here it is. Show grants for whomever, Beavis. Now, notice what we see here. This, is, this looks like Beavis has all permission, right? But he does not. This just says he has usage permission, permissions. It literally means he's allowed to log into MySQL. That's all he has, right? So if I were to log him in, this is Beavis now, show databases, it's nothing, okay? He can just log into MySQL. That's what that means. Now, once we give him permissions, we can, again, see them on this list here. So if I want to give Beavis the ability to pull records out of the item table, what do I do? Grant select. Grant select. Good. Item, or sorry, uh, tau .items. On tau dot I think it's just item, right? But yeah, the item database. And then to Beavis, right? So now if I were to show the grants for Beavis, there we go. It shows his select privileges on that tau item database to Beavis, okay? And if I go back to Beavis's login and I say show databases, now there's the tau database. And if I say use tau, show tables, it will only show the items database. And uh, I can select star from item and he can select everything. He can see everything in the items database, okay? So I just wanted to show you that because it came up the other day, and it is an important thing to know how to do. I just couldn't remember the exact syntax. All right, so we're going to exit Beavis out of here. And now I'm going to revoke those permissions, right? Revoke, select, on dot item from Beavis. And if I show his privileges again, just back to... Usage, which means log in. Yeah. So does revoke always have to be used with the word from, and then grant always use the word to? Yes. Yep. So when you revoke, you're revoking the power from the user, and when you're granting, you're granting to the user. Do you have a question, Chase? Would you revoke the, can you revoke the usage? Would that be no, because that just allows them to log in. Oh. Yeah, you can't revoke that. So his question was, can you revoke this? And no, this means that the user exists. That's That's the proof of existence there. So if I want to get rid of Beavis, what do I do? 
Drop. Drop user Beavis. And if I show grants for Beavis now, there's nothing. Okay. Okay, so that was just a little reminder about um, permissions there. So let's move on to the real reason we're here today, which is we're going to make some indexes. Now, um, where's my book here? Oh, this is kind of a visual aid we can't see on the video. Um, think about this and try to visualize this uh, if you're listening to the video and you're not here in the classroom. Um, if I wanted to look in my textbook and learn about views, right, the view command, or creating views or the view concept. What are my options here? I can sort of thumb through the pages of the book and hope that the word view stands out at me and stop on that page and read it. It's not the best option. I could look at the table of contents and, and look through the chapters and see if, you know, chapter, let's see, chapter five, I think is where, chapter seven, eight. So I'm looking through the chapters and I'm looking to say the word view in there and I don't actually see anything about views there. I could turn every single page, and as I turn every single page, hope to find the word view. None of these are smart options, right? Well, that's essentially what happens when you search through your database if you don't have an index on it. What's at the back of every book for the most part, every textbook anyway? Index. An index. So if I look to the back of the book under V for view, and I find the word view, and sure enough, it says views, Pages 197, 198, 191, 192, 203, 204, two, has a list, a comma-separated list of all of the pages. Now it's really easy, right? I go right to this page here, and bam, I can turn to page 191, and there's my data. There's what I'm looking for, okay? Well, we're going to create that on our database, okay? So let's take a look here. Um, let's use um, the Colonial database. I think that's the one I want. Yeah. And what I want to do is, is let's take a look at the trip table. Select star from trip. Yeah. Uh, so notice these trips here. The state, there's lots, there's a handful of states here that these different trips take place, mostly, mostly up in the Northeast. Connecticut, Vermont, Massachusetts, Maine, right? My old stomping grounds. I love living in Connecticut, man. I was two hours from everything, two hours from New York two hours from uh, Boston, two hours from Jersey, two hours from everything. Okay, um, so uh, what we want to do is make an index on the state. So that way, if I were looking for a particular trip in a particular state, we could find it more efficiently. Now, with our super small database, we're going to notice zero improvement, right? But with a big database, we'd notice a big improvement. So let's look at the concept of what's going to happen here. The idea is this. We're going to create a little spreadsheet here that's going to represent what's happening. So I'm going to do a couple of quick little queries to get the data out that I need. Forget about indexes for a minute. If I just wanted a list of those states right there, what would I write, what would my query look like? Okay, that will give me a bunch of duplicates. Almost distinct. There we go distinct, right? There we go. That's the list of states. Oh, I don't want that in order. Uh, order by state, okay? So I'm going to grab that. This is nothing to do with the indexes. This is a little visual aid that I'm going to use to help us understand indexes. So I guess it is related. Um, so I want these right here. And I'm going to put that right here. So I'm building a manual index here, if you will, okay? Now let's quickly take a look at the command line here, and now I want um, select trip ID comma state from trip order by uh, state comma trip ID. So what I'm looking at now is in Connecticut, which trip IDs are there? 7 and 19, right? So uh, all tabs off by one. 7 and 19. Massachusetts, I have 21, 29, 30, and 40. 21, 29, 30, 40. Okay, you follow what I'm doing here? Uh, Maine, I got a bunch of them here. 4, 5, 6, 12, 13, 17, 4, 5, 6, 12, 13, 17. I think I saw 22 there. 23, 25, 33, 37, 
23, 25, 33, 37, and 41. Okay, I'm not gonna do all these. There's a whole bunch of New Hampshire ones there. We'll just do a few of them. One, eight, nine, 10, 11. And then Vermont, we'll do all of the Vermonts. Two, three, 20, and 31. Two, three, 20, 31. Okay, this is a visual representation of approximately what's happening when I make an index on the database, on the table, okay? So what we're gonna do in just a minute, we're gonna write a command that will make something like this in the background so now, if I'm going to search for, I want to find a particular um, event um, trip that's in Maine, I have to look through a super teeny list of five states that's alphabetical. So I quickly find Maine in two seconds, you know, two nanoseconds, and then immediately I have a whole list of all the Maine trips right there, four, five, six, 12, 13, 17, and so forth. So if I wanted to say select star from trip where state equals Maine, I can get that data super quick. Now, again, with our small database, we're gonna notice no efficiency improvement at all. But in a real database that's huge, you'll see a big difference with this query. Okay, does everybody conceptually get what we're doing though? Make sense? Okay, so let's flip back here and see what that command looks like. Well, we're gonna create an index. So what's our rule when we're dealing with this kind of stuff? Say what, you're doing. Say what I'm doing, create. Say the thing I'm doing it to, right? Index, and then give it a name. And I think I have a specific name I wanted to use. Let me look at my notes here. Um, no, I didn't. So we'll call it the uh, state index. Okay. So create index called state index, and then you say that what field you're doing it on. Okay. I'm doing it on the state field. Make sense? Yeah, okay. So on state, and I wanna see if we wanna do anything else. We wanna sort it. We'll deal with that maybe the next time, okay? Um, so we're good. So and I, actually, I should say we need to do it on the um, uh, table, which is trip, and then in parentheses you put the field that we're doing, okay? Sorry about that. So create index, name it, so create index called state index on the trip table, state field. Now I can make that index sorted alphabetically, ascending or descending. The default is ascending. We're gonna leave it like that. Okay, and that should- remember that specific syntax and with the same trip dot state do the same thing? No, that, this syntax is what you gotta do, yeah. Okay. Yep. So it says um, that it worked fine. So now we will not see a thing different, <laughs> right? for speed or anything like that, but we can verify that the index was created, right? So here's how we can do that. For one, I can do describe rep, or not rep, uh, trip. And you'll see here that on the state, there's this thing right here. There's a new key. That key says MUL, which stands for multiple. What that means is that state is allowed to have multiple values in other words, you can have duplicate values. I can have multiple places in Maine, multiple places in Vermont, okay? But it's also, it's a key that has been indexed. And I can actually look at the indexes. If I say um, show index from trip. And, oh, let me do it in a better format there. Slash G. What is going on? Slash G. Gee, there we go. Okay, so now you can see, here's our primary key. That's one of the indexes, right? But the other one is we have the state index. So I've created an index on the state field. Now, if I'm searching by state in my where clause, things will be much faster. Okay, make sense? Now, anybody taking 2420 yet? No? When you get to 2420, you will study a data structure called a B tree. Right here, a B tree. This, the, I'm not, we're not gonna talk at all about what that is, other than it's a data structure that is designed for um, searching through it and, and uh, it's a quick way to be able to search through the data. So this is structured in the data structure called a B tree that allows us to be able to relatively quickly search through that data, okay? All right, any questions about that basic idea?
We good? Okay, if I want to get rid of the index, how do I do it? Drop index. Drop index. And what's it called? State index on trip. Okay, goodbye. Now if I do a show index, it's gone. Okay. Let me put the index back. I want to show you one other quick thing here. Um, you know that we, we know how to write a command to create a table. We've done this before, right? Well, you can actually have MySQL show you what that command would be like to create an existing table. So I can do this. Show create table trip. This will spit out the code I would need if I were going to recreate this table somewhere else. Right there. Okay. So I'm going to grab that and paste it into a text editor for a moment. There we go. And I'm going to get rid of this little thing here that's bugging me. Okay, good. All right, and I'll get rid of this. So I don't need to worry about that part. But you guys have done this command before, right? Okay. So this is just setting up that the trip ID, it's a decimal, and it cannot be null, right? And so on and so forth. Um, this is setting up the default value for each of these records is null. Um, down here, we've added a primary key. Now, in the past, when you guys did it, you maybe did it up here, right? Primary key. Uh, but we also talked about this other syntax where I could do it down here, right? Where I could say that the trip ID is the primary key. So what's happened here, this is creating all the fields. And then at the end, we're tacking on some extra stuff like create a primary key. Well, I'm also creating another key that's called state index. So when I create my table, I could have done it this way. When, so when I build a table, I could create the index at the moment I built the table. I don't have to do it later. Okay. So I'm just showing you what that command might look like. This is a helpful tool to know to be able to do this little trick here where you can say show the create on whatever thing. Because if you're forgetting how to write a create statement, look at an existing table and it'll spit it out for you. That's useful. Okay. We're going to use that again in a few minutes. But I just want to show you that. Let's drop that index again. Drop index state index on trip. Good. And now if I say show create table trip, that index is not there anymore. Okay. We good? All right. One other thing, you can also create what's called a unique index. All right. So let me show you that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to create an index. Um, I don't know how useful this index would be, but I'm going to show it to you because it shows you what happens when you create a unique one. So we're going to create keyword unique index. Okay, I just added an extra keyword there. Create unique index. We'll call it um, trip name index on trip table and on the trip name Come on. field. All right. And I want it to be descending, let's say. All right, create that. Now I have an index on, on the, the, the trip name, but look at when I describe the table. Notice here it has, now it has a key that says unique. What this means, it's, it's just an index like before, but it cannot have duplicate values now. The state index, we allow duplicate values, right? We can have multiple mains, multiple Connecticut's, but trip name, there's only one unique name per database. You can't have multiple duplicate names. Okay. I don't know that that's necessarily useful in this scenario, but working with the limited databases we have, we have to sort of make up problems sometimes just to show a point. Okay. But that's, so we can still just delete that and drop. Oh, and let's do a quickly, I'll oh, see here. All right. We're back and alive and I was going to say battery crisis averted, but it was not averted. We had a crisis. All right, so let's go back to use colonial here and colonial and um, 
describe trip. And we still have the index on there. We didn't drop it yet. Okay. All right. So what I was about to show you was if I do a show create table trip again, and we can see that now it's showing a unique key rather than just a key, right? That was the point I was trying to get at. So before I dropped it, I just want to show you that. Now we'll just drop it. So we'll drop um, index trip name index on trip. All right? So again, if I do the show, it should be gone there. Do a describe table, it should be gone. Okay, so that's just, that's really all I wanted to show you on indexes. Um, that's a, that's something that you need to spend some time doing a little bit more digging, maybe in the book. Um, but when you get out in the real world, that's a huge, huge time saving on big databases, right? Uh, so Andrew, have you got any experience with that? Oh, okay, cool. I was just curious because I know you've, you're a bit of a database guy already. Um, yeah, so um, check with the, the guys you work with and see if there are what what indexes they have and and um, um, see if they'll let you play around and sh and do a index and non-index query on some big data. Um, that may mean you have to turn off the index, which you don't want to do that. So maybe duplicate the table first just to play around. Um, but you can you'd be surprised the savings you can get. We had some queries that were taking minutes, um, like, you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes sometimes, um, maybe even an hour, that when we indexed uh, the right fields, we got them down to, you know, just seconds or, or maybe a minute, you know what I mean? And when you're dealing with an app that interacts with the database, like a user app that's interacting with the database, it's got to be quick. You can't have a query, like you can't have them opening up a customer record and it takes a half an hour to open up the customer record, right? So you gotta you gotta be efficient. So indexing is one way to be a control freak and be efficient. Okay, next up constraints. Okay, um, so I had my little text editor going here, which had the notes that we we're talking about views, users, uh, indexes today, and constraints. Okay, with constraints, there are lots of different kinds of constraints. We've dealt with some. We've talked about some already. What are some constraints you can think of right now that we already have talked about? A primary key is a constraint, right? Primary key prevents you from having a duplicate record, a duplicate primary key, right? You, and it also requires that you must have one in the table if you've got an actual primary key, okay? Um, there are legal value constraints, which we are not going to get into, but you can put a constraint on the table that says only these values are allowed. Okay, and we talked a little bit about that. If you'll recall, when we were looking at data types, we talked about enums and things like that, where you could put in some uh, lists of values and that kind of stuff. Um, so we're not going to dive into that, though. Um, that, yeah, that's a, that's a constraint on, yeah, what values are allowed to be in there that have to have a value. Yep. And then uh, the one we're going to look at, though, is foreign key constraints. Foreign key constraints, right? So right now at the moment, if I go, let's go ahead and use uh, Tau. And um, let's do select customer name and rep num from customer order by rep num. So right now this is a list of all of our customers and they're represented by, four of them are represented by whoever 15 is, four are represented by 30. Four represented by 45, right? If I were to do a select star from rep, we see that we have 15, 30, 45, and there's a 60 person, Janet, who is clearly slacking, doesn't have any customers, right? Well, I can insert into the customer table right now uh, anything I want, including a rep number that doesn't actually exist, right? I could say, uh, let's do a describe customer. All right, so I can say insert into customer values, and we'll go uh, customer num. What's the format of the customer num? I don't know. Um, TLC. And the customer name is TLC toys. And the street is 123 main, and the city is Murray, and the state is Utah. 
and the postal code is 84107, I don't know, making it up. Balance is zero, credit limit is zero, rep number 99. Now, 99 is not a real rep, but look at that, it let me do it. So now I can say select star from customer, that's going to be ugly, and here's this dude that's represented by 99. Who the heck's 99? There's no 99. Okay? That's a problem, right? You don't want that. If we had to do a, a join that to the rep table, that record wouldn't even show up, right? Because there's no 99 in the rep table. So we need to make sure that that cannot happen. So what can we do to make that not happen? Put a, yeah, put a constraint on the foreign key. So I'm going to delete that record. Okay? Delete from customer where rep num is 99. Let's get rid of that. And I also want to copy that query so I can use it in a minute again. Let me just paste that into my text editor real quick. Okay. So now I'm going to put a constraint on this, all right? And the way we do it, um, we're, we're actually going to be altering the table, right? So I'm, I'm altering the customer table and putting a constraint on it. So alter table, customer, say what you're going to do, say the thing you're doing it to, say its name. And then I'm going to say the thing I'm going to do, add. What am I adding? Foreign key. Yeah, a foreign key. And I'm going to give it a name. The name I'm going to give it is F key underscore rep num. You can call it whatever you want. Okay. So I'm going to give it that though. And now the next thing is we need to say what that key is. What field is that? Right? Well, what field is it? Which field are we putting the foreign key on? Rep num, right? So in parentheses, rep num, right? So I'm saying alter the customer table, add the foreign key, call it foreign key, F key rep num on the rep num field. But that's not enough, right? Because if I want to prevent you from putting in a 99 when it's not in the rep table, I've got to let you know that this is referring to the rep table. So this references rep table rep num. That's a big mouthful there, guys. Nope. Yeah, it's a, you got to use it that way. Yeah. I don't think so. Try it. It might work. I don't think it does though. We'll we'll try it in a minute and see. So now what I so again alter table customer that that's easy right we know the old adage right say what you're gonna say do say what you're doing it to say its name. Right? Then say what you're gonna do, add, say the thing you're doing it to, foreign key, say its name. I just created the name and I just had to be a little bit more specific about what it's referring to. Okay? And then last but not least, I'm telling you what that refers to. Okay? Let's run it. So now I've put a foreign key constraint on the customer table. Now, if I try to insert that 99. I think it's still my copy buffer, it is not. If I try to insert that now, it won't let me. Because it's telling me, hey, there's no 99 in the rep table. Okay, that's a very useful thing to do. Yes, sir. Can I do a little bit of outside of what we're looking at, but can you put in multiple different two columns of different tables of foreign key constraints? Like, so if I was like the rep num on this table or the rep num on well, no, if you're, well, that would be bad form to name. So the answer is you can have multiple foreign key constraints for sure, right? Um, but you don't want to have one foreign key representing two different primary keys, right? A foreign key is, is only representing one table. Like if I wanted to put in a state or a province for Canada, okay. Okay. Can I say foreign key for this? No, you would have one 
table that has the states and the provinces in it. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, so, yeah, because you don't want to have a foreign key that could mean this today, but it might mean that tomorrow. That's just bad. That's messy, ambiguous data. That won't work, right? Okay, so now we have the foreign key that's restricting us from doing anything here. Um, how do you suppose we drop foreign key? Oh, we, sorry, I said the word. How do you suppose we get rid of foreign keys? Drop them. Now, it's dropping them sometimes can be tricky. So drop, uh, sorry, we're going to alter table customer. Drop foreign, make sure you spell it right, key. And then the foreign key's name, F key rep num. Oh, sorry. And then... Uh, rep num like so and I told you they're tricky because you can't actually drop the foreign key that way you have to drop the constraint right I do this every time I don't know what my problem is okay so here, what you really have to do sorry about that this created a, an actual constraint in the database and you can see it if I say show create customer create table Here's the, the, the constraint right here. Called, the constraint's actually called customer IBFK underscore one. Okay? So I need to drop that. Okay? So alter table customer drop foreign key customer IBFK underscore one. There we go. Okay. I don't know why I always try to drop the foreign key directly. Brain cramp. Okay, um, so that's the again a short version of foreign keys. Now, when we get into boot or bootstrap, um, <laughs> workbench. Sorry, I just got through the bootstrap today in my fourteen thirty class. When we get into workbench, we're going to look a little bit more at foreign keys, and we're going to look um, a little bit more at indexes. And we're going to look at a couple other little things like triggers, um, where if I do something in this table, it triggers an event in another table. There's little things you can do like that. Um, we're going to look at that in Workbench. And we're going to look at how to do it on the command line and how to do it on Workbench. But Workbench lets you sort of do some point and clicky ways of creating constraints and point and clicky ways of creating indexes and of creating users and a whole bunch of different things in a graphical interface way of doing things. So the, today is probably our last day on the command line, actually. We'll, we'll hit it a couple times when we're looking at Workbench, but we're going to focus mostly on Workbench. So with that said, when you installed MySQL, Workbench should have come along for the ride. If you recall in my video where I told you to install it, I said Workbench will probably open, just close it, Okay, you should have Workbench already installed. You don't need to do anything else other than make sure it's installed before Thursday. Okay, I'm gonna turn off the recording. If there are no questions, then we'll talk for two seconds about Workbench. Yeah, is it related to this? Is, yeah. yeah, yeah, sure. So you know that constraint? Yep. Or, yep. Um, is that system generated? Or yes, yeah, the system created that, yeah. System automatically created that name right there. And you can use that name. You can actually say add constraint foreign key, right? You can actually do that. Um, and in fact, if you do it that way, then you can drop it. That's the thing I was, I was missing. So if I said alter table customer, add constraint foreign key and give it a name, then I would have been able to say drop foreign key by the name I created. That's the part I was leaving out in my brain. Anyway, but yeah, that's automatically generated if you don't do it yourself. Okay, I'm going to shut this off, and then we need, I just need two seconds of your time to talk about Workbench.